Hello, forensics class. This is Mr. Williams. I hope everybody is doing well. We are going to start a unit on firearms and ballistics. When we talk about ballistics, um, that's going to encounter a, a lot of different things. Today's lecture is going to be about firearms basics. What you see here is a guy who is test firing a round from a AK-47. And so he looks like he's like firing into like this little tube. Um, well, he is. So he's going to insert the firearm into this tube and there is a pool of water in this. And so when he shoots, uh, you're going to see, well, you won't see it, but um, what the, what the um, projectile will do is it will, it'll come out of the barrel and it'll just like stop in the water. Um, this is real useful because whenever you need to compare one projectile to another, um, you need something to compare it to, and this is one of the tools. Um, I have been to a Kentucky State Police Crime Lab, and this is what it looked like on the inside when I did a tour. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to uh, begin with the warm-up. I want you to imagine that you're a manager at a forensic crime lab that test fires guns suspected to be used in crimes. Well, you're the manager, so what safety rules would you enforce regarding handling a firearm? It's your job to keep everybody safe. What would you do? First and foremost, the firearms golden rule. Guns are not toys. I know that there's a lot of media hype about it. Um, it's a pretty controversial subject and um, it, it can hit home emotionally for people impacted by violence. But what you need to know is guns should never be used maliciously or for evil purposes. Maliciously is just basically with bad intent and with the intention of doing harm. Guns should never be used to commit an unlawful act or cause harm without legal justification. Okay, guns, um, it, it sounds a little bit ridiculous when you say this, but guns are not intended to take life away. It's to preserve life. So I asked you in your warm-up, what was your rules for a safe operation of a firearm? Well, there are five basic firearm safety rules. If you follow all these five rules, then it's much more challenging to, to be injured or have an accident with a firearm. Number one, always keep your firearm pointed in a safe direction. So you can imagine that the um, firearm, there was like a laser light coming straight out of it. Anytime that you move your firearm, and if that laser ever comes across another living being, then it's not pointed in a safe direction. Like you've, you've like crossed, the gun has like crossed their path. Number two, treat all firearms as if they were loaded. Always. A firearm is loaded. Don't believe somebody. They say, here you go. Oh, it's not loaded. Well, you better check. Um, if you're in a crime lab, you're always going to safety clear and make sure that firearms are not loaded. Even when you know for sure, you're still going to handle it with lots of respect. Something to be respected. It requires a lot of responsibility. So um, the third 
firearm safety rule is you keep your tr trigger finger outside the trigger guard and off of the trigger until you are ready to fire. Um, it's interesting whenever you see movies or television shows, you can tell someone who is untrained in operating firearms because you'll see that their finger is on the trigger. And um, yeah, you don't really want to do that. The people who have had more training or maybe they're just better actors, you'll see that their their trigger finger is straight while they're like um, walking around or running around, you know, clearing an area. Um, another uh, curious thing to think about is um, what naturally happens when people are scared, they're nervous, or their adrenaline is pumping. Well, the body diverts blood from your hands and your legs and into your internal organs like your your heart and lungs. Um, and so when that happens, it is a natural physiological reaction. That means your body's reaction to clench to a fist. So if you already have your finger on the trigger and you're nervous and you're in a high stressful situation, um, Think about what's going on with all these police shootings, like when when the police are like scared. Um, if they have their finger on the trigger, it's like their body's instinctual reaction to like start to squeeze. And that's just terrifying. But moral of the story, keep your trigger finger outside the trigger guard and off of the trigger until you are ready to fire. Number four, be certain of your target, your line of fire, and what lies beyond your target. Um, there's been situations where people have um, been in their home and uh, injured loved ones because there might have been an attacker, an intruder in their house, and they have fired the gun, and it just like goes through walls, and it goes through drywall, it can go through bricks. Um, it's Bullets aren't necessarily easy to stop. Uh, number five, always wear appropriate eye and ear protection when shooting and maintaining your firearm. And you can see in the um, previous slide where the guy was test firing that AK-47, he was wearing um, eye protection. He could have been wearing better goggles if you ask me, um, but he's wearing ear protection too. Um, shooting a gun will damage your hearing if you don't have eye protection. So we're going to talk about four types of firearms. So one is a handgun. You can call it a pistol. That's what you see at the top right up here. Um, I believe that's like a Glock. Underneath that, you're going to see a revolver right here. Um, under it, you're going to see a rifle. Um, that's also referred to as a long gun and then below it is another type of long gun which is a shotgun um, you're going to need to need to know those you're going to see those on assignments and you're going to see it on a quiz that i'm going to post later so this is the bullet cartridge four parts you're going to need to know you're going to be quizzed on these and um, you're going to be um, getting assignments on it so there's the projectile. The projectile, that's this top part right here, that's what's flying through the air after a firearm has been been shot. Um, commonly people say that's the bullet part. It is in a metal casing, usually brass, sometimes steel. Um, that's the number two that's on here, and that's called the casing. Um, casings are what are often left behind when a um, crime has happened or shooting has happened. Uh, the gunpowder is inside, it's what explodes. The um, propellant is what it's called. And underneath it, there is a primer. It's a little explosive cap that's inside. Um, and if you hit it real hard, it causes fire to shoot up inside and cause the gunpowder to explode. Okay, next, shotgun shells. Shotgun shells are a little bit different. So, um, the shotgun shells are either going to attain something called, uh, contain something called shot, um, or it's going to be a 
pellet or it's going to be something called slugs. So up here to at the top and to the right, this is the slug. A slug would just be a large bullet. Um, on the left, if it doesn't contain a slug, it's going to contain some kind of shot. Um, they could be small BBs. They could be um, a combination of um, multiple larger round um, balls, and they just shoot out and spread out. Uh, they're usually measured by um, something called gauge. Gauge is the measurement of how large the shot would be, like 10 gauge, 12 gauge, 20 gauge. Well, this shot is contained inside of this plastic casing called a wad, and underneath it is the gunpowder. And all of this right here is going to fit inside this plastic case. Inside this plastic case, um, there's going to be a head, it's called the brass head, and a primer it sits up inside this. So if you look over here to the left, the primer gets hit by a pin, and that causes it to um, explode or catch fire, and this ignites the gunpowder, and then it shoots out the wad, and the, and the shot comes out. Here's another image. Um, you can see the shotgun shell on the left. All right, you got your primer that ignites the gunpowder and the wad shoots out and all these bullets, or these pellets, they're gonna come out. Um, here is another example. Um, this would be a center fire bullet over here in the center. Um, the primer will um, get impacted by the firing pin and again that causes a um, small burst of flames, gunpowder explodes, and then the projectile shoots out. Um, the 22 long rifle bullet, um, it's a little bit different. There is no primer. The entire bottom of the of the bullet is considered to be like a primer and so they call that rim fire okay so what makes the what is so useful about matching bullets is because of this process of rifling so a rifle has been rifled. Um, it's a process where they basically take a drill and the drill screws down the barrel of the gun. It's called rifling. And so this is going to create a spiral pattern. This spiral pattern is going to be unique to every single gun. Even if you're using like the same type, type of barrel and you're using the same drill, it's just going to be a little bit different microscopically. And that is the reason you're going to be able to match bullets. Um, the reason why it was rifled is because it makes the projectile fly very straight. It doesn't wobble as much. Um, Kentuckians um, during the Revolutionary War were known to be such great shooters um, because we had rifled long guns. Um, at the bottom we see the smooth bore. Um, a smooth bore, um, it doesn't spin and it's going to shoot out and it's going to tumble more. Uh, it might flip around and um, it's just very unstable. And if you've ever seen a um, Civil War movie, um, everybody would line up in lines and it was just really hard to aim when you had a smooth bore rifle and that was the most common type of rifle. Or I shouldn't say rifle, the most common type of long gun. Because so, if they're smooth bore, like a shotgun is a smooth bore, they're not rifled. That's why they're um, harder to shoot with. Shotguns just shoot out lots of, of projectiles all at once, and that's why it's hard to miss with a shotgun. Okay, so this is the image of a, a photo taken down the barrel of a gun. Um, and you can see these grooves. 
Um, this is a um, a, a close-up, so it's it's it looks a lot more uh, exaggerated as you see this. The pattern of the rifle barrel is broken down into two parts. Okay, so make sure you get you understand this because people get these confused. The grooves and the lands. The grooves are like the valleys. The lands are the part of the metal that's sticking up. So the grooves are the part of the barrel that has been drilled away and forms a depression. Well, I guess I just said that backwards, didn't I? No, I didn't. I said it correctly. Sorry. <clears throat> so the grooves are the part of the barrel that has been drilled away and forms a depression. So it's the valley. The lands are part of the barrel that, that remains and it wasn't drilled away and it sticks up out of the barrel. And um, so I, I kind of mentioned this earlier. Um, all the way in the left, you can see the lands, they stick up the grooves, they, they come down, and that'd be a um, rifle or a handgun barrel. Shotgun barrel all the way to the right, it's smooth, and you're not going to have that stability of it spinning. The image in the top right, the lands and grooves, um, the lands are the ones sticking up closer to the center, the grooves are sticking down. Um, get used to that image because I used it on quizzes. Okay, you've seen this picture before, so shotgun barrels, they're called smooth bores. Uh, they do not have a spiral pattern and so it doesn't spin and the projectile is much less stable and does not fly completely straight. But most often, this would be a slug that you see here um, and this bottom image would be a shotgun slug, but often shotguns use lots of pellets inside. And so it's hard to miss because you shoot out 12 different rounds that spread out as it goes forward with one single shot. Okay, so we're getting ready to talk about um, a, a few different types of firearms. There is a lot of misinformation out here on this. Um, I think some of it is um, because the media um, purposefully uses incorrect terminology for this and um, they're trying to influence people to um, not be as knowledgeable about it and kind of make some guns seem worse than they really are or seem more um, deadly than they really are. All right so the first part is manual is the manual firearm. So for a manual gun the user must insert a round into the chamber. So they're either gonna do it manually, like you have to take it out with your fingers and put it back in, or you have to do it through the action of the weapon. So the action of the weapon is gonna be like the lever. You see a lever action here. There's a bolt action right here. Um, or a pump, like a pump shotgun. You ever seen somebody in a movie, you know, pump the shotgun. Um, that would also be considered a manual firearm. A lot of uh, World War One and Two firearms were manual firearms. Okay, the second type is the semi-automatic firearm. Okay, this is the one that most people just are that have misconceptions on. Okay, semi-automatic firearms is not automatic. Okay, but um, th this first bullet point is like the key to understanding it. Okay, in a semi-automatic firearm, you pull the trigger one time, and then you only get one bullet. So one trigger pull is needed for each round fired. So if you want to fire 10 rounds of a semi-automatic firearm, you have to pull the trigger 10 times. And um, so bang, 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 right? It, it's much slower. Um, the military, this is not the kind of weapon that they use. Semi-automatic weapons shoot much slower than the fully automatic weapons. Semi-automatic weapons are used in hunting, sport, personal defense, and law enforcement. So um, if you see the handguns that the police officers use, um, that would be a semi-automatic firearm. 
A fully automatic firearm is completely different. Fully automatic firearm can continue to fire as long as the trigger is held, pulled, or until it runs out of ammunition. You think you pull the trigger, and it's just going to keep going. It's like when you're playing video games, you're playing a shooter, and um, um, when you play the game, if you have to keep pressing the button to get a, a shot, that was a semi-automatic weapon. And that's usually the kind of guns you're not trying to pick up when you're playing video games. If you're playing a video game, you want the fully automatic weapon where you press the controller button and you hold it down and it just keeps on shooting. That's what a fully automatic firearm is. So remember the semi-automatic, it'd be like if you just press the button on the controller, you only got one. Even if you held the button down, it only shot once. A fully automatic firearm is you pull the trigger and you hold it down and it just keeps on shooting and it shoots really fast. Or if you're playing the video game, you hold down the controller button and it just keeps on shooting. So fully automatic firearms are the types that are going to be used in the special units like SWAT and the military. Fully automatic does not depend on accessories such as pistol grip, collapsible buttstock, which is, just makes it longer or shorter for depending on how tall you are, uh, or magazine capacity, doesn't like how many bullets your magazine will hold. Um, the entire point of a fully automatic firearm is a fully automatic firearm will have multiple shots with only pulling the trigger once. So, so that's the key to, to think about. All right, guys, this was the introduction to firearms. Um, I know I'm not with you guys. I'm excited. We've got a lot more coming on um, on this firearms unit, and I, I hope, we, hope we all enjoy this. Um, you guys, um, be safe. Take care, and um, I'll uh, hopefully I get to see you guys soon. All right, bye-bye.